203, our topic is going to be joy again. Now you're probably wondering, how many times are we going to talk about joy? So uh, let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning or afternoon, whenever uh, we are watching together. Lord, I pray that as we talk about joy again, to me, it's a topic that we could talk about every day and be reminded how, again, the joy of the Lord is our strength and how we need to live and walk in the joy that you bring us. And so I pray that you would uh, speak to our hearts through the, your Holy Spirit this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Joy again. So I have taught numerous times over the holidays. Um, I taught a few different at churches and things like that. And it seems like my constant topic was joy. I'm sure because I needed it. I think I told you, it was like two coffees ago. My word for the year is joy. My word last year was joy because I don't think I did it very well. And my uh, word this year is joy. And then I got a magazine that I really like um, called Just Between Us. It's for women in ministry. And the whole thing was about joy. And it's like, okay, Lord, I hear you. And I love what the angel said in Luke 2.10, thinking back on the Christmas story when Jesus was born. She said, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Great joy. I love that phrase. Not normal joy, not the kind of joy of, oh, I just had a good chocolate chip cookie or a good meal or a lunch date with a friend or something like that. That's normal joy. And God created that kind of joy as well. I really believe that. I learned that joy is used over 200 times in scripture, but great joy or exceeding joy is used less than 10 times. And that kind of joy, great joy, was always kept for special moments or the highest moments, like when David's son was named as his successor in 1 Kings 140, or at the restoration of the Passover after generations of neglect, or at the dedication of Nehemiah's rebuilt walls. Matthew and Luke talk about it at his resurrection and his ascension. And in Luke 15, 3, he mentions great joy at the surprising and wonderful inclusion of the Gentiles in God's new covenant people. And then again in Jude 24, he uses it to describe our coming um, into God's own presence with exceeding or great joy. Great joy. More than normal joy. The word great means, I think we know what it means, but uh, to, to define it, it means an amount considerably above the normal or the average. So the joy that Jesus brings or the Christmas joy that we just celebrated a few months back is set apart and different than normal joy. And so often we settle for normal joy, right? When his joy, great joy, transcends. It has height. It extends from the highest of heavens to the lowly shepherds. It has lengths. His joy goes to great lengths for all people, not just kings or smart people or rich people, but shepherds, the lowest, tax collectors, men, women, Jews, Gentiles, me, you. It has depth, deeper than the grief or the pain or the wounds that we feel. His joy was birthed in a dark, sick, busy world, and it can't be extinguished. It's too long, too deep, too wide. Great joy will remain. That joy can be in our hearts forever and every day, no matter what, no matter uh, what's going on around us, despite the hurt and the frustration or the grief. And as God's kids, we have an invitation to approach his throne of grace whenever we need it. Hebrews 4.16 tells us strength, wisdom, comfort. We can come to his throne and come to him and be in his presence. And then we can find fullness of joy, as David says in the Psalms. We can come just as we are to receive mercy and grace in our time of need. And in our time of need, we can focus on the joys in the thorns. Now, I read particularly, and I think that's what I've been thinking about, how often 
um, when we're going through difficult times and we're tempted not to find joy, there are particular joys during difficult times. There's the joy of being called closer to Jesus in Matthew 11, 28 and 30, right? Uh, in the difficult times, we are called to be closer to him. There's the joy of knowing that God is working for our good and his purpose, as found in Romans 8, 28. There's the joy of learning new and deep truths about God through the Holy Spirit as we go through hard things. The joy of feasting afresh on the word of God. The joy of um, experiencing God's sufficiency in maybe a way we haven't. Uh, the joy of learning how to glorify God in struggles. Um, learning a deeper way to trust and depend on him. Those are all things that we learn through the thorns and through the difficult times. They are things of great joy. If we choose to focus on those kinds of things, our thorns can become the means of grace. And his grace is always enough. Now, a friend of mine uh, emailed me right before Christmas just to thank me for something. And in the email, she said, hope you had a great Thanksgiving and that your Christmas is looking bright. I loved that phrase. I don't know why, but that phrase touched my heart and made me smile. Is my Christmas, it was back then, is my Christmas looking bright? It wasn't that day, but then after she said that, I actually was able to turn my gaze upward at the opportunity that we have to celebrate his coming, at the grace he gives us to endure the difficult stuff that I was experiencing that day, and the joy, not the normal joy, but the great joy that his presence brings to our lives and our hearts. I hope your Christmas was looking bright. Now, Peter, in his writings in scripture, calls it joy inexpressible, joy indefinable, joy indescribable or unutterable, 1 Peter 1, 7 through 9. We can rejoice with a joy that isn't explainable. Now, happiness is of the moment, but joy transcends that. Happiness reacts, joy embraces peace and contentment. So, is your Christmas looking bright? May, Christmas is past. How about is your day looking bright? Is your year looking bright? And I thought about it with Jesus. I think the answer should always be yes, because he is there and he is joy inexpressible. He was the joy that came and he was the joy that fills our hearts. So how can it not be bright since he is, after all, the light of the world? How can our future not be bright? How can our day not be bright with Jesus in it? And so, ladies, I pray as you think, why are we talking about joy again? I don't know where you're at today. I feel like so often our joy just gets swallowed up by our circumstances and everything else. So I pray that you would remember that your future is bright. Tomorrow is bright because Jesus is in it and because Jesus is in control. Amen? So let's pray. Father, I thank you that our future does look bright. Father, I thank you that um, you are joy and your joy can remain in us. Our joy can be full, like you said in the Gospel of John. And so wherever we're at today, I pray that we would focus on finding you in the thorns, finding you in the mundane, finding you in the challenges that we face every day. The joy of the Lord truly is our strength. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Love you. See you next week.